One method of sea fishing that I really find relaxing is float fishing. There's something special to me to stand there and watch that float drifting along and bobbing along. And then the excitement when you see the float go, go under and you get a take from a fish. It's, 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 it's the relaxing element to it and, the, and the, the visual element to it of actually seeing the float and actually seeing it go down. I just find it, find it a huge amount of fun. And it's something that's really great to do in the summer. So, float fishing this morning, and what I'm after is mackerel. Now, I'm just gonna, I wanna get on and get on and start the fishing quickly this morning because I want, it's quarter to six, and I wanna catch these, these first light hours where hopefully there might be, two, might be one or two mackerel have moved in close here after the sand deals. So as the, as the session progresses, for those interested, I'll talk, a bit, I'll talk about the tackle that I'm using, the setup that I'm using and the baits that I'm using. But fingers crossed, we'll have a bit of, bit of fun this morning, relaxing fun, catching a few, few mackerel float fishing. Not bad conditions, bit of a bit of a bit of a brisk side wind, but better better than being maybe a, uh, an onshore, uh, which might make it a little bit difficult for me to cast out and the float and the float get getting washed in too quickly. So pretty pretty good conditions. Actually, this side wind. This side wind is stronger, stronger than I, I thought. Um, so I'm, it's, <clears throat> with the tide in the same direction, it's ca causing quite a quick drift right to left and a, and a big bow in, bow in the line, which is a bit, a bit of a pain, but and never mind. I'm relying on, on some mackerel coming in, in close here um, because I can't, I'm not going to, unlike spinning, I can't cast this out um, a huge distance. Um, I'm just relying on them coming in close, there being plenty of sand deals close in here by the rocks and then the fish coming in after them. Now I think, I may be wrong, but I think this is a garfish. Uh, as I say, the float, the float just went flat on the surface. That's usually an indication of garfish. Maybe wrong. Well, I'm, <laughs> I am completely wrong. What, what do I know? Well, I've actually ne never seen that before with mackerel where they, uh, usually it's garfish where the float lies flat on the surface. And then, um, but it was mackerel this time. Good. I've been getting, I've been getting some few, few takes, but, uh, not been able to hook them but finally finally got one oh good at least I haven't blanked Because there's because there's such a such a brisk side wind, and I'm getting such a bow in the line. Uh, when when you do get a take, it's it's not 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 so easy to to get a strike, a quick strike on the on the fish because you've got such a such a bow. Um, that float's gone there, and I'm in. Yeah, because you've got so much, so much of a, of a bow, so much slack. Um, it's not so easy to get a quick strike on the fish. 
Well, I can tell you, I can tell you this. This, along with spinning from the shore, is, is, is definitely my favourite way of targeting mackerel. Well, we'll that one we'll we'll put it back and just wait and hopefully get get one or two a bit bigger than that all right this is the bait i'm using i've got little little strips of mackerel from the belly section of a mackerel not not too big only about inch and a half long and then i've the hook i've got is a size one hook usually when i go mackerel fishing I normally fish with anything from say size four to about size one and I'm just just nicking it nicking it on the end there I'm trying a new new red float what I say when I when I a bit later a bit later I'll talk about the um, oops I missed that one that's talking I'll talk about the tackle but what I was gonna say is I'm trying a red a red tip float this morning my eyesight's not that brilliant these days uh, usually I'll fish with the yellow ones and but I've been, been struggling to struggling to see them so I thought I'd go for red and uh, I'm, I'm really seeing this well right good what I found work there because I've got this this big bow in the line because of the caused by the side wind what i found there is is when i get a take is to really real real use the reel as well real fast rather than just striking where sometimes you're striking against nothing um, is to real fast to, uh, and sort of reel onto the fish as well as striking and it worked it worked that time All right, so we'll have a talk about this tackle I'm using now. So the rod I've got is a, is a, a nine foot lure rod. This one's rated 20 to 60 grams. Then I've got my 4,000 size lure reel and that's got 18 pound braid, which I use for my, use it for my lure fishing as well. And joined to the end of the braid is a leader I've got a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader which is just a bit longer than twice the length of the rod and that's joined by an Albright special knot and then thread on the the line if I can find it just a minute thread on the line I've got one of these rubber float stops I'm actually trying them for the first time today very very slim float stop that are designed to go through the rod rings but what I'm finding is they're not staying it's not staying in place it is slipping and I'm having to readjust it and, and the slipping is happening I've got the at the moment because I'm not fishing very deep I've got the rubber stop outside the tip ring when I'm casting but it's still moving and what it is it's when the float comes back and is hitting it as it flies through the air it's enough force to move it so what I might do in a, in a moment is because I'm constantly having to readjust the depth is also is pop, pop a, a stop knot above it as well a sliding stop knot which is what I normally use but yeah I mean I thought I'd give them a go they're very slim they do go for the rod rings okay but as I said um, for this type of fishing um, it is it, it, it is still moving maybe two two might help but anyway I'll put a stop knot on in, in a moment so we've got so I've got that on the line as my stop so to stop and adjust the depth then thread on the line is a bead small bead 
Then my float, which is a 25 gram cigar float, down to another bead, then down to a swivel. Now, I've mentioned this before and I've done a video about it. What I use when I've got a cast, I've got a bit of, put a bit of force into a cast like I've got to today with this breeze. I, I use this anti-tangle setup. So the lead, instead of the lead, lead weight sitting directly under the float, it runs, it runs in, on a piece of thicker line. This is 30 pound amnesia line of about 18 inches long. And I've got the, the lead trapped between two beads that runs between that. So you've got this little section. So you've got a swivel there and a swivel there. And then your lead running in between, slightly thicker line. And then you've got your, your trace. Now the length of the trace is, is set so it, it can't go above the float. There you can see the length of it. So it's the length of it when I fold it back is falling below the top of the float. Now what this is for is that when you've got a bit of force in the cast under the normal setup where the lead sits directly under the float there, what can happen, this comes backwards in the air and the annoying thing is then it, that happens. It tangles on the top there, which is really annoying when you, uh, you've cast out and you, you see that happen. Now what this does, it prevents it happen. Hap it stops it from, from, from that from happening. In. God, I can't say the word. Happening in him. Never mind. You know what I mean. It stops it, stops that. Um, but I only use it when I've got to put force into the cast. If you're fishing on a harbour wall or a pier and all you're doing is just lobbing it out, then you don't need this but this is really really good i've not had one tangle i'm sure many of you that go float fishing will know what i'm talking about where that catches up above the float there it, it doesn't happen with this setup and then again down to I've got a size one hook and a, a small a small strip of mackerel all right so that's the setup Just adjust that. Just slide that stop down. As I say in, in a minute I'll go and put a put a sliding stop knot on as well. Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a pain having to keep adjust adjusting the uh, the stop. Yeah, so I'm having to put quite a lot of force into that cast to to get it to get it out there and. Um, no tangles at all and I've used this setup a lot now in fact I use it every time I come float fishing off the rocks where I do have to put a bit of force into the cast and I just don't get tangles so it does work the idea is not my idea it comes from uh, Edschleifke I think that's how you pronounce his surname very very well known north coast Cornish angler uh, was very well known as a, a, a bass angler, also known as the rock hopper, Edge Leaf Key. That's where I got it from, that setup, the anti tangle float fishing setup. Well, that's good. Definitely feel it was worth worth getting up now, early.
I'm really pleased with this float. There it is. Really, really, sh really uh, shows up well. I'm having no, I'm no trouble seeing it, even at my maximum casting casting distance. But what I'm what I'm doing to try and counteract, it seems to be working. Counteract this big bow problem I've got, where I've got. It's impossible when I get a take. It's impossible for if I just strike. Um, I'm not getting any contact, immediate contact with the float. So what, what I've been doing is, instead of just striking on nothing, as soon as I get a take, is, is reel as fast as I can, reel onto the fish as fast as I can at the same time as striking. And, and I can get contact, I can get contact with the fish much quicker that way. Well, this one's this one's small. We'll let this one go. Just trying to shake it off the hook. There we go. Gone. The wind, <clears throat> the wind seems to be ch uh, changed direction now. It is be becoming at the moment a bit more of a offshore, and uh, it's, actually, it's actually making it easier to strike on the fish because I'm not, I'm not getting, I'm not getting such a much, such a big bow in the line. Well. Another, another small one. We'll let we'll let this one go. What I thought I'd do, just for a change, I'll try, I'll try a bit of, a bit of this lance that I normally catch, catch off the kayak with the sabikis. I'll try that. Just for a change. Particularly as they will, the mackerel that are coming in here will be coming in, they'll be coming in after the sand eels. It's certainly a fantastic morning. So the breeze has died down now, it's a real pleasure. Sun, sun's up now, and I'm getting. Feeling a bit of warmth now. It's, it's quite. It was quite chilly early on uh, when the sun was down, but uh, yeah, it's fantastic now. And as I said, this is this is just just a, such a a chilled out way of fishing. It's just it's just so good just watching the watching the float. Well, you get that visual that visual aspect of uh, of the float going down another one coming in I'm pleased to, pleased to say ah what fun
I've gone back to fishing with the little pieces of mackerel, the mackerel to catch mackerel. Um, I was getting, when I was fishing with the launch fillet, which of course is, will, will catch mackerel of course. Um, but I was getting got mainly in the garfish bites, um, which I don't really want the garfish t today. Well, each to their own, but when it comes to shore fishing for mackerel, give, give me spinning or what I'm doing today, float fishing, any time. R rather than, rather than uh, hurling out a string of six feathers here with, with four or five ounces of lead. That's highly productive, but it's, but it's also, also hard work. And this, this, this fishing is float fishing and uh, is, is so much more relaxing. For those of you interested, I've been using these for a, for a bit now, the last few sessions shore fishing, when I've been shore fishing off the rocks. These are these wading waist waders. You can see they finish there. And I've, normally if I, when I come down on the rocks, if there's a bit of a swell coming in, I wear chest waders. Um, but sometimes when you in the summer, when you've got the hot weather, it, it just gets too hot. So I thought I'd invest in a pair of these waist waders. And I can tell you, they're absolutely brilliant. They are so comfortable. It's, it's quite warm now today, but it's, it's gonna get warmer. So all I've got underneath here is a pair of shorts. But these, these are so comfortable to walk in. And of course, the great thing is, instead of wearing, say, ordinary trousers, particularly when there's a bit of a bit of a, a chop coming in you know you could get closer to the water you stand close to the water and it's they're also really useful when of course when you want to release a release a fish you can go stand in the water but but the point the point I'm trying to get to is they are so much better uh, at this time of year than wearing chest waders which I would normally do but yeah, I really recommend them. These are, the, I'm not pl not plugging these, got nothing to do with them. They're, they're the mate, they're called, I, think, I don't know how you pronounce it, Skyera, Skyera, something like that. S 16 waterproof. I think this is the measurement. It's, it's 1600, the, uh, I don't know, somehow they measure the waterproofness of the, this, mater this material. I mean, they, these were not cheap. Uh, I think they cost me about 150 quid, so they're not they're not cheap. But I tell you, so so comfortable. Got a zip. No pockets. Yeah, and, and combined with the weight, combined with the wading boots, I'm I'm really really pleased that I brought them now. Um, just makes fishing on the rock so much more comfortable. Well, this this wind this morning this breeze has been all over the place first it was a, a awkward side wind uh, then it calmed down uh, went more offshore then it came back to the side wind again and then whoops there's me talking and uh, not focusing on the float there just had a take there oh god i think there's a lot of um a lot of very small mackerel out there. Oh, I got hit at, at last. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, it's funny with float fishing. You, uh, if you, you lose concentrations or you look, you look away or and you lose focus and the float goes down and you uh, you can miss the bites.
For those of you interested in, in this float, which I'm really, really pleased with, basically it came with, uh, as a pike fishing kit. I think it's called a leader pike dead baiting kit. And I brought it because I do go up, up country in the winter sometimes. And if I, if I do, I do a bit of pike fishing. So I brought it dual purpose really for that, but also knowing that I could use this float for my uh, sea fishing like today. So this one's 25 gram and I've got another one 15 gram which would be ideal for uh, fishing off a harbour wall when you just li literally just flick it off the harbour off the end of the off the end of the harbour wall but yeah they're, they're, they're great great floats. Right this is going to be the last one it's time for me to go anyway, but plus this side wind is, is getting worse, not better. Um, and it's a bit of a pain. So we'll make this the last, last mackerel. Well, that was a fantastic way to spend a Sunday morning, really relaxing, huge amount of fun, and I'm really glad that I made the effort and, and got up now. It's been a beautiful morning. It got is a bit awkward fishing at times, doing this method, float fishing, because of that quite a brisk side wind, putting that big, big left bow in the line, which you, you just couldn't stop. You couldn't stop, and that that made it uh, difficult to strike quick enough when I when I when the float went down. So I did miss quite a quite a few bites bites today, but never mind. Got plenty of fish, put some back, and got a few to to take home and enjoy. So once again, I hope you found that useful, and many many thanks for watching. <laughs>